Um, when we go back and kind of understand Tim Berners-Lee's vision, it was around the internet as a public service, the internet as a public utility, uh, and more importantly, the internet as um, essentially an enabler of global economic participation and an equalizer. And most of those things are not true today. Uh, most of those things still have failed to kind of reach the light of day. I mean, in, in our day-to-day -day lives, we use the internet in a way that we're generally okay with the trade-off that we're making. You know, if I go online today, I know that I'm probably allowing Facebook to monetize my relationship status and other such things about my data, or I know that there's probably somebody who's paying attention to the communications that I'm having or looking at the payments that I'm making. But generally, it's a good experience because what I get out of the internet is worth it. But the problem is really in its design, not in its use. And I think what we're trying to address is less about how we use it, especially in the Western world where the internet is still a positive enabler for most things about our lives, but it's on this tipping point of being able to use in unintended ways. You don't have to look much farther than you know, countries like China or governments like Turkey where the internet can very quickly shift from a positive enabler to a force of control in authoritarian government's hands. And so the way it's been built and the way it's, it's kind of evolving is kind of concerning from that perspective. And when we think about Web3, we think about changing the fundamental design, not the use of the internet, but its design and how it can be possibly used in the future.